All right, we're going to do some map generation now. Now with map generation, the one thing you have to be very aware of is the overtoppling of forms. Okay, so here, for example, this form is sitting very tightly on this other form. It looks really nice that way, right? But when you're doing a map generation, it's not going to be so nice. It's going to have some clipping involved. I know, because I ran it already. And that's always the case. Normal map generation is caused from raycasting. And when you're raycast onto a surface, onto another surface, you have problems. Um, and those problems go away very quickly if you raycast your items separately. Or thick enough where they don't bother each other. So, I always take a model, let's say this model, and I kind of break it up a little bit. So, I saved this already, and my deal is I'm going to go in here and mask off. Inverse and move some of these parts away from each other. Okay, so um, let's see. Clear that. So we got to do this in a very specific way because there's there's pieces of this model that uh, will fall apart. Okay, let me give my brush a little bit smaller. Okay, this piece. Inverse. Now I can move this piece without a problem. I'm going to move it actually with uh, the deformation palette. I know I'm just, I'm always just a big fan of this deformation palette for some reason. I know there's the move tool, but for some reason this just feels better. Safer. Like I could just move it, see? Clear. Okay, let's do the knife. And I do the knife by hiding all the other things. Clear. Okay, mask that off. Inverse it out. Again, I'm just going to kind of move that over. This time the other way. So I got three items. Now, I can quickly put those back by just offsetting them in X. Okay, I didn't move them in any special way. Let's go to geometry. Lower the geometry all the way down. Geometry didn't get affected in any way by moving them. Let's go to normal map, UV map. And I think these three have UVs. I think I did that already, but just in case, I'm just going to unwrap these. Since they're the, all the same subtool, or tool, not without subtools, the map should transverse all of them. To check that, new from UV map, and there they are. Now I say that blade is a tad ugly. There's no doubt about it. A blade is supposed to have nice hues in it. Nice clean hues. See the other one how it has a gradient and the blade does not. So there's something special about the blade and we're talking very special um, that I don't like. So what I'm going to do is take it and make some new UVs some AUV tiles and then I'm going to go back to unwrap all yeah it looks legit so I'm going to use it the new from UV map 
basically states, is there any overlapping UVs? So I could do a new from UV check or a new from UV map. The UV check turns out great with no red. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, so now I'm going to generate some normal map. So tangent, adaptive, smooth UV. Create some normal map. When I make uh, UVs here in ZBrush, I always use a smooth UV feature. When I make UVs in any other program, I try to stay away from it. Okay, so let's look at that. That looks nice, very nice. Okay, along with that, I'm going to make a displacement map. Again, adaptive, smooth UV. There we go. Now I'm not even going to bother putting them together. I could do that in Maya in two seconds. So rather than do that, I'm just going to go to Go Z. See my Maya icon bouncing in anticipation to see what this sword looks like. There's a sword waiting to be viewed. Six on the keyboard. Doesn't look like much until you turn on the magical high quality rendering. And there we go. Now, later lessons, I'm going to teach you how to do UVs the right way in Blender. Um, you can really have a very large control over UVs that way and you won't get all these little tiny anomalies that are showing up here. Okay, So never fear this is this is a very good start and you can now see how it all adds up. Now if I separate these grab them, modify center pivot, normal soften edge. I can now move these back into position. Now keep in mind there is no um, actual color map yet so you know, that's one of the one things that does add to the model quite quite effectively. Combine all those back together, and there we have our sword. And it's only 736 faces or 1472 tries. Nice. So not not a bad little model. But once you get into the real good UVs, you're going to get uh, a lot less of this thing going on right here. This is all tore up and a lot less of this pinching going on. So in the future here, I'm going to be doing a skull video. In the skull video, I drag Blender into the mix. Blender is a free application that allows you to uh, do UV mapping. It's called UVW unwrapping. So basically it does what ZBrush is doing, but it does it in a way where you have a little bit more control over the situation and a little bit more you can see what's going on. Where this one you have to do a UV map check and see if there's anything going weird with it. Alright, so there's your sword. Enjoy. And on with the next lesson where we have fun with the skull.